All right, what's up, Dragon Brood? Today, we're gonna be getting some Nazgul in, and it's gonna be probably better than you think. At least I'm hoping so. Let's go take a look and see what we got from the early access, playing some Nazgul. Okay, first things first, what I had to learn the hard way, which might or might not show up in the videos, I don't know, but I had to learn that the Nazgul, you actually have to choose each individual art if you want all nine arts in the deck, which is weird because it seems to be easier to just program it to just, whenever you play one, it gives you a different art, but it is what it is. Just something you should know if you want to put the different artworks in your deck. Or you can just put, choose your favorite and put nine of them in there. But either way, you can have nine Nazgul, and that's one of the reasons you want to play this deck. It's a one-two with Death Such, you get tempted by the ring, which is awesome, and then you get to put a plus one plus one on each Wraith you control. Notice that says each Wraith and not each Nazgul, so we are going to have a couple of other Wraiths in the deck that could benefit from it. Likely not many, though. We are also going to be playing alongside some white mana here, so we're going to play Boromir, which can protect your creatures, which is super nice because you don't want to build up a bunch of things and just have them die. We are going to play Brutal Cathar because that gets to remove a creature, and the Nazgul can force their way through if necessary. We're also going to be playing Frodo, Sauron's Bane, because... This card actually could do some work since we're able to move up the uh, ring counter very easily. I don't know if we're ever going to get the one-shot win there, but eh, maybe. It's actually a pretty useful card, though. We're also going to be playing Juggernaut Peddler. This is one from uh, Alchemy that actually gets to do a little bit of stuff, but you can remove a card from opponent's hand and replace it with the Juggernaut, and then they can cast it later. However, you can also do it to yourself. If you want to get rid of a card that's just like hanging out and maybe be able to play a big 5-3 later, that's totally reasonable, too. We're going to play Call of the Ring because this card is stupid good, uh, especially if you just want to ramp up and then just get more cards. But it's another way to have the ring tempt you so you can move it up and help out the rest of the plan that the deck's going with. Now we're going to play Inquisitor Captain because it does let you get things that cost three or less, and lo and behold, Nazgul happened to cost three or less, so that's awesome. We're also going to be playing Elish Norn because on top of your opponent being forced to chomp block, we're going to make their life difficult and try to do extra damage to them. Shield Rid because... You're playing black, so you might as well play Shieldred. Radadrabic, because we do have a fair amount of legends. Speaking of which, we are going to play the other Elish Norn as well, Mother of Machines, because Mother of Machines lets us double up all of our triggers that enter the battlefield. And as you can see, we have several of those. We also have Witch King of Angmar, which happens to be a Wraith Noble. This is a way to keep your opponent from attacking because you put more pressure on them because then they have to sacrifice things, and that's cool. And you can discard and just make this indestructible as a nice bonus. It does cost five, though, it's not the cheapest thing. But that doesn't really matter because we have Ring Race, which also happen to be six, but they get to destroy something when they come into play. Well, minus three, minus three. If it's a legend, you get the opponent loses three more life. And they do get the benefit of Nazgul coming into play, which is also super nice. And you can return them from the graveyard and use them over again. Probably won't because they cost six mana, but, you know, it's an option. Otherwise, we're just going to be playing a bunch of land and, you know, things to kind of fill in the gaps. But if you didn't know, you should, if you're thinking about buying any Lord of the Rings stuff, you should probably hit up our folks over at CoolStuffInc.com. Pay them some love. Use code DRAGON. You'll save 5% at checkout. Because, you know, cool stuff always has cool stuff in stock. Other than that, y'all go watch these games. Have some fun. The full deck list will be at the end of the video. If you want to download it, just look for the Moxfield link in the description down below to have two arrows. And you can get our other deck list, too, if you want to check them out. But y'all go have some fun. I'll catch up with you at the back end of the video. Oh, they didn't give us different Nazgul pictures. It's the same one. Man, that sucks. It's like a small thing, but I totally wanted it to be... Man. Alright, well, it is what it is. Alright. Man, so bad. So bad. Okay, they're playing the Scry deck. We do need to draw land here so we can start getting these down with our Death Touchers. We did find land, so that's good news. We could level this up if we wanted to. Or we could play the Peddler. I don't think we want a Peddler here, so I might just level up Frodo. I think that's what we're going to do. And go get it. And then we can Nazgul, Nazgul, Boromir, probably. If I were guessing. The Walrus, which is more mana later. Uh, 
All right, and a Merix. Let's go ahead and play this. And I think we start in on our Nazgul shenanigans here in a second. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, I could have had the ring tempt Frodo, right? Yeah, I could have done that. That would have been smarter. Uh, the first level of the ring is your ring bearer is legendary and can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. So, yeah. You'll just keep Frodo only being blocked by small things. Oh, that's a cool way to denote who's got the ring. I like that. That's a cool effect. Elrond will not be blocking Frodo. Uh, yeah, we're going to go. Uh, we're still going to choose Frodo. We're going to give our duders some things. And uh, yeah, we're attacking. Draw and discard. We will be discarding probably one of the Boromirs because I don't think we need... Actually, you know what? We might want to sacrifice those later. Maybe we're just getting rid of the Peddler at this point. Yeah, Boromir can't block him. And if we can get another Black Mana... Oh, we need two more Black Mana. To uh, have Frodo... Whenever he deals combat damage... That player lose the game if the ring tempted you four more times this game. Uh, we've already been tempted twice. Frodo is going to be a nuisance to the opponent, which is our goal here. But if we can find more Nazgul, that's super cool too, because then they pump each other, and then we have a big pile of bad things. Though they are getting to put counters on stuff to be able to trade. So we may just bore Mirror up so our stuff doesn't die. Gladrill, which... Uh, whenever the ring tempts you, you choose a creature. All right. Okay. You got it. We're just going to take five. Ooh, that doesn't suck. But not what we're going for here. We are going to attack four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They could block with a one, three. Yeah, that's fine. Ooh. Ooh. Nifty. Um, I guess we don't need Merrick's, huh? Alright. Only just taking it. Going to three. Let's see what happens. Man, this Frodo's going the distance. Showed up turn one and just kind of hung out. We're at 23, so I'm not too worried about it. And we can just play Elish Norn ultimately. Right? And then the opponent is going to take damage whenever they block or whatever. Oh, if the opponent makes their creatures too big, nothing will be able to block Frodo. A two power can still block it. But once it becomes three, they can't. Alright. Get to put some counters on things. Gladrill. Oh, you get to put a land in if there's a land on top. Alright, so now that one can't block. Come on, make the halfling too big, and then see if we can find a swamp. We'll, we'll get the insta win with Frodo. They're not going to do it, though. There was a chance, but they're not going to do it. Uh, sure. 10 and 7, that's only 17. 18, because you scry here. Yeah, I don't think we're dead. I think we're good, right? I mean, who knows? They could have a thing that prevents damage or something here. I, don't, I haven't memorized all the new cards. Who the heck knows? What is that? Oh, they're casting it. Whatever it is. Nope. They, they thought about it and then didn't. Okay. So, they're at three. They can block one and then do what? I mean, I guess we just cast this, right? Oh, I guess it's nothing. Okay, sure. All right, opponent says GG. Oh, well, yeah, that's fine, I guess. The other Boromir. All right, those bounce, and then we get the damage in. So score one for the bad guys. The Nazgul get one. Uh, What do we do here? We go first, huh? All right, we'll keep it. This is probably going to be slow, but I think it's worth the gamble. Rummer, if I have to choose nine different art, that is so bad. Like, they should just give me the nine arts. Uh, let's see. This will be black, I suppose. 
Uh, we'll make it white. And, yeah, you could hang out. Why not? We're not casting anything for a couple turns anyway. <laughs> oh, man. Though we are playing against Triple H CL VIP, so I might get uh, body slammed here. Or that being said, I guess I could get pedigreed. If the opponent gets mad. <laughs> hey, thanks for the game, Dev. All right. All right, we made it to where we wanted to be at least, so that's a good start. So now it's, do we get rid of their thing or do we just start making Ring Wraith? I think we start making Ring Wraith. Because if they ramp into something bigger, we can just Brutal Cathar and I guess that's fine. All right. Creature chosen. Nazgul is a 2-3, holding the ring. Which is not the way the story is supposed to go, but hey. Sometimes the bad guys get a win. What is this? Oh, mirror box for legends. That's cool. You don't get to see that card too often. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to do this and see if we could find a ring wraith. All right, sure. Wasn't quite a ring wraith. Uh, put one of them on the battlefield. I guess this guy. And then we just attack. Okay. That wasn't so exciting, but it also wasn't terrible. Aragorn. We will be getting rid of Aragorn. We do not like that. That is highly problematic. Let's remove Aragorn. Let's play this. Put it on white, I suppose. Frodo, I guess, is okay. Then we attack. Plus, all these Vigilance creatures are just hard for the opponents to push through, I think. Also, the Nazgul currently can't be blocked, but the Nazgul holding a ring... I mean, it can be blocked by this, but it can be blocked by bigger stuff. The Nazgul holding the ring, though, becomes bad because we actually make it bigger. But next turn, I mean, we could play another Nazgul if we want. We could play Ratted Rabbix and Frodo, which is fine. Wizard's Rockets. That lets them get different mana colors. They do have three mana open here, so we don't get to kind of run amok the way we want. Let's go with this. See if they have a counter for that first. No. Hmm. We will make... I guess the Nazgul don't really need to be the ring bearers, huh? We'll put that here. And we will attack with this, this, and this. Hopefully they don't have a way to kill the Brutal Cathar. <laughs> Actually, might as well attack, right? Because if they have a way to kill Brutal Cathar, so be it. Then they just have it. Ooh, we did find another Nazgul, though. That's pretty sweet. Um, Ratted Rabbix. We, don't even, we only have Boromir as our legendary, so whatever. And we can sacrifice him if we have to. Oh, all right. They didn't have anything. We got there anyway. Cool. Corvo Go Blue. What's up, dude? Uh, Yeah, let's keep it. I think we're going to set this to... Ooh, I don't even know. Let's see what land we draw, because I don't know if I want this to be black or white, because I like both these cards. I may actually play a Peddler, target myself, get rid of the other Peddlers, so I get a Juggernaut. <laughs> I think that's going to be... It's like the most inefficient Juggernaut, but it's a two-mana Juggernaut, so there's that. All right, let's... Oh, boy, I feel like I'm choosing... I think I have to put this on black, though. Sort of what that feels like. Okay, I get another Shieldred. You know what? I'll take that as a backup option. Just in case. Because I kind of... I mean, I guess I could also discard that instead of the Peddler. And then if we don't get the right mana, that would be fine. So that would be an option. Yeah, I think we Peddler and we get rid of one Shieldred. I'm going to target myself. Get rid of that. And then we will just have a Juggernaut for the future. And then we will pedal their hand next. Oh, man, we did not draw land. This this did not work out the way we wanted at all. Uh, dang it. Orcish Bow Masters. All right, so they deal one to it, then they block, kill it. Makes sense. All right, I guess we go with this. 
sadly have to give him a juggernaut because we have to slow things down at this point. Ooh, the one ring oracle, which is annoying. Hmm. Hmm. Well, in your battlefield conjure, you get a midnight clock. Don't love that. Oh, boy. This is going to be tough no matter what we do here, huh? All right. I guess I'll take the one thing they can play immediately and try to buy us some time. All right. I mean, because we're not doing much else. Oh, that sucks. All right. Little peddler, you get to wear the ring. Kind of all we can do, really. It's very sad. It wasn't that impressive. All right. So they get their clock. And we get nothing. Oh, no. All right. There's not a lot we could do here. I tried to set ourselves up and give us some opportunities. Maybe we could be aggressive if we had the juggernaut, but ultimately we got nothing. Yeah, we're going to be way too far behind now. Yeah, sure. I'll block. Why not? Okay. This is at least a land. We get to attack for four. You know what? Let's let's try this. All right, that's what I was hoping to find was another Nazgul. Uh, actually, mm, putting Boromir into play is actually relevant, but let's go with this. All right. Okay, found another Wraith. That's good. Okay. Do our Nazgul... They get another turn after this, right? Oh, no. It says on the next one, I guess. No, it's actually... Draw a card piece instead. Yeah. Take another turn after this one. Okay. We can cast another Nazgul, which makes those each plus one. We would also move the ring up another one. It becomes blocked, creature sacrifices it. We may have to just try for shield or whatever, with them drawing the number of cards they are, if we can get an opening through. Don't know that we will, but we'll see what happens here. Alright, they're finally casting the Juggernaut. And I think this might just be shielded time. Just double checking if there was anything else I wanted to do there, but I don't think there is. This has to be on white. And another. Actually, you know what? Having the ring wraith in hand. Maybe we want that. Try? Ah, it's not going to resolve, is it? Oh, it did. Random. Didn't think that was going to work. Okay. We get to draw and discard, so we know what's on top already. We will be getting rid of probably this other little Nazgul. Because we can just try casting Elish Norn next turn. Bowman, you'll get to kill something. Look at that. Yep. Sounds good. Alright, that's a lot of tradesies happening, but I think we can live with that. Okay. Opponents at eight. Okay. Seek doesn't count as drawing, so that's that's like getting around drawing cards with Sealdred out. All right. Putting another counter on the Midnight Clock. Though if Midnight Clock goes off, then Sealdred will deal a lot of damage. So that's real. Also, if we can find another untapped land, we could just play this one straight up, which would be kind of nice. Oh, Shieldred dead? I would totally understand if it were. Oh, what? Oh, he's just going for it. Man, I love it. I I love the gamble. Like, seeing if you have an answer for Shieldred, just, you know, if you got it, you got it. 
Oh, another one ring. All right. Yep, I think we're good. Wow, that game started out really badly for us. I'm surprised it went the way it did. Yep, a lot of shield red triggers. Whew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Might as well stack them up. Like, get max value. That's a thing. We will keep this. All right. Lots of Forsaken Crossroads being played today. And rightfully so. We are going to... Man, this is a little tough. Because I could play Frodo, but then I can't really do anything with him. So I'm just going to do this. And try to play Spirited Companion. Get us some other cards, I think. Is the better value here. And then next turn, we can try to Peddler... Hey, that's pretty good. I guess to kill our little dude. Makes plenty of sense. I'm into it. This is a much better start for CGB here. Oracle gonna get to do some shenanigans for some Power 9. Gotta love it. Uh, what's the other thing? Is it just... Whenever it attacks, you scry one. Okay. Let's put this on white. And then we'll untap it. And I think we're just going to go with the Nazgul here, I believe. I think that's the plan. And then we try to set up some uh, Brutal Cathars, maybe. Not much else we're going to be doing. I mean, I guess we could Peddler and Frodo. I mean, that would be a thing. I don't even think I block here. That just feels like a, a trap. Yep, it would have definitely been a trap. All right, they are definitely way out in front. We are way behind, obviously. So what can we do here? We can play a Brutal Cathar and Frodo. Don't necessarily want to give them a, I mean, I guess if we give them a Juggernaut, they won't have the mana for it unless they just draw land, so that's real-ish. <laughs> Alright, we're going to play this. We are going to play this. Get rid of that. And I guess we attack. I don't love it, but it's a thing. And then I guess there's a chance they don't cast anything, but I can't imagine. Yeah, I was going to say, it would make a lot of sense for you to not cast anything. Alright. I mean, that's three damage whenever I draw a second card. So, drawing a card is now terrible for... Like, once we go up with the Nazgul... Oh, yeah, yeah, we're dead. <laughs> Alright, GG's. Yep, we're dead. Good job. They found an Ancestral Recall. Uh, that's the silly stuff that makes alchemy so bad but hey you know what that's a good way to die i can't even be mad about it way to go <laughs> oh no we can't keep this this we have to mulligan that did not get a lot better that's unfortunate very very sad we'll keep it we'll get rid of this and pass You know, and Darius, and, th and this isn't a shot at you, by the way. This is just general PSA for people. That everybody hops into streams and asks all the same question, like, how are the decks today? How is the format going? Blah, blah, blah. And, like, we're answering the same question, like, 30 times. <laughs> Not anybody's fault. It's just one of those things that... But, yeah, generally speaking, we're a lot of times going to have the same answers. That like, nah, it's fine. You know, it's it's magic cards. Uh, let's go ahead and go with this. See what the opponent's got in hand. They can have a Juggernaut. I don't think their deck wants to be playing Juggernauts. So, let's see what's up. They have a Tamiyo Safekeeping. Creature you know, deals damage equal to its power to another target creature. Alright, cool. This at least means, in theory, we could Brutal Cathar their creature. Which is what we're hoping for. Don't know that we're going to actually get to do that, but we're still going to try. 
That being said, I'm probably also just blocking here. Okay, now they're going to use their fight spell. Yep, alright, cool. Now we know we got clear runway. Now, admittedly, we're also going to take a pile of damage and we're going to be at, what, six poison? Five? So, that is a problem to at least some extent, but we will do this. And that at least solves the problem temporarily. They can cast a Juggernaut now, though. Assuming they found a fourth land. Alright. They did cast a spell, though, which matters. And they can get a non-human card with mana value. Oh, pff, really? Oh, uh, what are the odds? <laughs> Alright, then. Fair enough. You got it, you got it. Okay, looks like we're going to play a Nazgul, I think is the game plan here. We will put the ring on... I don't even think it matters who gets the ring here, actually. Sure, you can have it, I suppose. And we'll attack. Alright. I mean, we're already at five poison, so it's a little bit of dangerous ground. But we're going to do the best we can here. I mean, the Juggernaut I gave them will eventually come back to haunt us. But we'll see. Alright, there's the Juggernaut. So we don't get attacked there, which is real nice. Uh, I think we just play this and scry, truthfully. I think is what we're aiming for here. Okay, another Nazgul. Not too bad. Not mad at that. Uh, this can't be... Oh, no. Yeah, it can't be blocked by a creature with greater power. So we can attack with that safely. Alright. Now, sadly, this is going to get to do a pile of damage. The backside of the battle is an 8-8, which is a real issue. But we will at least have Death Touchers. <laughs> I mean, so... Ugh, this is going to be dicey. Generally, against Poison decks, you, your life total doesn't matter. But here, it kind of really does matter. So... What do we want to do here? I feel like if we block with the Death Toucher... Alright, that seems okay, I guess. Then we at least force the opponent to use that to kill this if they want to keep the Juggernaut. And I'm kind of okay with that. Oh, they had an Infectious Bite too? Oh, that hurts. That sucks. Honestly, that hurts a lot. Damn. Okay, well... That uh, did not quite go the way we wanted that to go, unfortunately. Okay, I guess we go with this. And we're probably just going to attack with the Inquisitor. Just to draw and discard, hopefully. <laughs> like, that's kind of all that's going on here. This didn't quite come together the way we wanted. Though, if we can find one of our big ring race, that would be pretty sweet. That is not those things. So, that's real bad. <laughs> Alright. Probably just going to kill our Death Toucher here. Nope, they're going to get back their creature. Okay, well, we go to 8, and then we just die now. Alright. Just target your own things, and we're dead. GG's. Yep, we saw that coming. No surprise. Yep, that hand did not come together for us. I'm sure for both of us, there's better things you could do with your time. Uh, yeah, let's keep this. Let's go. All right. Let's go ahead and run this out. We got three Nazgulls. This should be interesting. All right. Man, Companion actually sucks with the those Orc Archers being out there. Like, that's not a good look for us at all. Let's put this on, I guess, Black, since we have so many Black spells. And we will definitely untap it so we can start casting Nazgul. Probably the only way this gets in, because it can't be blocked by things with greater power, sure. The slow attacks. Happy Thursday to you, Paul. 
A Balrog deck. I don't have one of those yet. Have I played with Aragorn? There's uh, multiple Aragorns, and I have not played with any of them yet today. Ooh, Markwood Bats, though, came down. Uh, I think we're just going to scry with this one. I'm going to put this one on white, and we're just going to scry. Five. Five? Okay, we go with Elishnorn next turn. And then we have multiple things with ETBs, so that's pretty good. So don't hate that. Let's go here. And keep it on the Spirited Companion. Race up. Attack. Draw and discard. We're going to be discarding probably Ratadrabix here. Alright. How much damage are we taking from Merkwood Bats? Let's see. Alright. When a player cast their second spell each turn, you lose one life and create a treasure, which from the bats is going to cost us a point. Alright. Cool. It's a thing to know. Hopefully, Elish Norn will turn off some ETBs from the opponents. Uh-oh. There's things they can do here. Alright, I'm going to try to just attack first here. To see if the opponent wants to try to kill a Nazgul, potentially. I don't know that they do, but, you know. Uh, we'll get rid of this peddler. It'd be good to see what's in their hand, but we're just going ham. We're going big. We're trying to get the ring wraith down. All right. Looks like Elish Norn is probably going to be the thing that gets the go for the throat. Or whatever removal choice is here. Oh, no. Okay, they're sacrificing to create some treasure. Makes sense. Deal a point to us. Elish Norn down. All right, so that wasn't so bad. That could have been a lot worse. Now if we can find an untapped land, we'll have a ring race ready to go. Oh, that works. Boo. Boo. All right. Fortunately, I don't think we're dead yet here. We're at 14. And they have a lot of damage to block being at 7. So we're probably okay. Oh, they're just coming with it. All right. Well, we got it either way, I guess. This time, though, we get to play Big Ring Wraiths. Because this is just absurd in size. And we kill this, so the opponent loses three life. And then we get to attack. Yep, alright, that worked. But, let's see, are we going to keep this? I think we are going to keep this. It's not a super strong hand. We might actually go Peddler early, unfortunately. But that might just be the best thing for us to be doing. And they went green on their land. Uh, I think we're going to play this on white, and we're just going to scry. And see if we find something. Ooh, we got the Call of the Ring, finally. All right, I'm going to keep it on top just so I get it. <laughs> like, even though I probably want some lands, this is fine. We at least get to do something with it. Let's... Uh, hmm. Do we want a Spirited Companion or do we want to just go for the Juggernaut Peddler here? I think we're going to go Spirited Companion. Okay, that's fine. And then we could do a three mana thing here, which looks like it's probably going to be a Ring Wraith. Or I say a Nazgul, not quite a Ring Wraith. It is a Wraith Knight, but not particularly a Ring Wraith. There is a difference. Spider. We. Oh, I was about to say we're going to remove a spider, but maybe we're not. Uh, yeah, we'll call White. Hmm. Yeah, I guess eh, we'll call it black. Why not? And we'll untap it. We'll play this duder. And then we will attack with both of them. Why not? I mean, we have Death Touch on the Nazgul, so sure. Oh, you can't block that 1-1. One, one. There you go. Oh, they don't want to trade. Maybe they do want to trade. Nope. They're trying to go back to the 1-1. One, one. They can't. There you go. All right. 
And if they have something crazy, we do have a Brutal Cathar next turn. If not, I think I'm going to try to get the Call of the Ring down. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not totally sure yet. This is the first Mono Green deck we've seen today, though. Oh, looks like Shieldred's going to get to do some business. Oh, we get both of the cards we want anyway, so that's super nice. Let's get rid of that. And we're going to go ahead and play Call of the Ring. So during our upkeep, the ring tempts us, and if we choose a creature, we get to pay two life and draw a card. Which you kind of have to choose, so it's just you get to pay two life and draw a card if you want to. Opponent's only at 9, and this is a good setup here. We're going to be able to go to the third level on the ring if we want to. And which, if it becomes blocked, it basically uh, has the Basilisk ability. So if it gets blocked, it kills it. And whenever your ring bearer deals combat damage, each opponent loses 3 life. So, uh, yeah, this is not bad. Oh, we're going to fight or do something to Shieldred here. I would completely understand if you did. Nope. They might be trying to save a trick to kill our Brutal Cathar and then block Shieldred, if I were guessing. That would be a completely legit action. Um, however, if their plan is kill this and then double block, well, this would just kill those anyway. Alright, I'm going to do this, and we'll just draw a card. Not really much reason to choose differently, I guess, here. I mean, we choose a Cathar, but Cathar is going to be one of the first things to die, I would assume, if they have some type of bite spell or something. But back up Ring Wraith. That doesn't do too much. We get two more life. All right, we could double Ring Wraith, though. That's cool, and then we get to do a free three damage. I'm down for that. I mean, as much as the Peddlers would be nice, let's go. We're just going to get completely tempted and corrupted here. And, yeah. Oh, I forgot. And we get another card. These are just free cards here with Shieldred out. Because we get tempted, target, pay to, draw, lose to. So, like, yeah, this is cool. This is just all bonus action. Yeah, to the point that we might as well attack with Brutal Cathar. Because... This is going to deal three, so they're at six. If they block the Cathar to be able to get back that, they would take four or five and then just die during their upkeep to Shieldred. So, eh? Sure. Like, this is crazy. This is so many cards, and it's just, they're just free. All right, cool. Let's go. I'm into it. So we maxed out the ring. And we found another Nazgul. All right. I don't even think we need this Spirited Companion anymore. Things have just gotten silly. Things have gotten out of control. Yeah, I'm assuming there was a fight spell or something here. A bite spell at the very least, but maybe not. This could just be it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Chris Zhu, thank you for the super chat. How's it going? It's going great today, actually. Having a great time, actually. Like, I really like the set, and I don't play that much alchemy, so it's been pretty cool getting to hop back in and play with a lot of these, so this is cool. All right, opponent's going to lose three, and that's going to be it. Yep, that does it. And get rid of a plane so we can keep both Nazgul because I'm greedy. Uh-oh, first Skrull we've seen today. Fortunately, Frodo can fight a Skrull. Oh, Giada. Uh-oh. This feels like somebody who's not playing a lot of new cards. They're just going for it. All right. No attacks. All right. Well, I guess we'll just see if Nazgul can outrace them. I don't really know. Nope. They have a Frodo. So they're, oh, they're doing Legends. Spells cast from... Amongst cards you drew this turn costs one less to cast. Spells cast from among cards your opponent drew this turn costs one more to cast. Well, that's fair. I just drew a land, so that doesn't really matter. 
Let's attack. Hmm. I'm not going to. I was going to attack with Frodo, but then I changed my mind. This guy's double strike. Bleh. Um. Okay. I'm just going to put that there for now. I don't really know what else I'm going to do with it. He's just going to hang out with it. <laughs> Didn't have a good, good reason. He just has it. All right. I remember that guy. Tap a thing. Get a copy. Tap a thing. Nope. Doesn't do that anymore, huh? Oh, well, there's another one. Well, there you go. Yeah, I don't even know if I can include this matchup in the video unless I do something cool, because the opponent really just played Frodo. Alright. Well, that other Frodo we're not going to do much with, so that's whatever. We are going to play this, put it on white, we are going to scry, and see if we find something good. That is not good, so we can go away. <laughs> All right, the ring tempts us. Put it back on the dog. Those grow a little bit. We attack for one. Actually, maybe don't even attack. I mean, I do get to draw and discard, I guess. That could be something. Yeah, Brutal Cathar is pretty nice. Let's get rid of this other Frodo. All right, let's see what we can do here. We're definitely going to still take two from Giada, possibly more, because... Oh, gosh. All right. What does that find? All right. Another Evangel. Sure. All right. Everything's coming in. I mean, Frodo's blocking here. Probably going to block one of the Evangels one way or the other. Fortunately, I do have black and white creatures, so we don't get completely blown out by Skrelv here. But we're going to take no less than, what's it look like, six, seven minimum? So it's going to be kind of tough. All right, Frodo's coming to get it. Uh, protection from black? Sure. Uh, we can just block. Oh, we can't block. We can block Frodo, but not kill it. Fair. Um, two, three, four. That's a, but they're not even moving up the ring, so we don't care that much. All right, that's fine. All right, we're at eight. Ooh, that would have been nice a while ago. <laughs> Doesn't really do anything now. Uh, I guess we could do this. Choose nothing. Man, this is rough, because I have to get rid of Giada. I want to get rid of Skrelv. But the truth is, we do have black and white creatures, so Skrelv doesn't really do a whole lot. If I leave one of each back and keep myself protected. Uh, sure, I'll just look at the opponent's hand. Um, we can draw on discard just to see, but the truth is if we get a land, we would want that. Oh, no, because this would cost five next turns. Yeah, we're better off blocking. It's not even worth doing anything there. This should buy us enough time, though, hopefully. Oh, looks like they found a removal card, sadly. I don't know. Let's find out. All right, Skrelv's going to make that black, sure. Like, we know that's a thing. I will block here. Yeah, it's not worth letting it through and going to six. All right. Though I would have tied up their mana, I suppose, for a turn. All right, Brutal Cathar dead. No, we got to flip the Cathar. Interesting. Okay, we're not mad at that, actually. That's that's not a bad thing. And now we have an additionally a red creature, which matters. Alright, so if we attack with the four or five, they could block with these two. We would kill both of them. And then they just have a bunch of one power things. We could also just attack with the brutes. That's kind of nice. And... Yeah... I mean, sure. We're only at eight, so there's probably some stupid way I die here. But, you know, got to risk it for the biscuit. But yeah, somebody wanted to... Man, I'm sure y'all can hear, like, the neighbor's lawn. I am so sorry. But yeah, there's the ring whenever you click it. It just, like, shines and flips or whatever. 
Uh, sure. That's fine. They'll get you out of back. That works. Sounds like a plan. Do, 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 do. And then they take four. Alright. In the turn. Let's see if something good happens for us. Man, if we can get one of our things that... Like the big ring wraiths... That could kill a thing. Uh, that'd be so good. We get to kill two things. Frodo... You can attach equipment. All right, we go to six. Come on, big ring race. That's what we want right now. Yeah, another Nazgul ain't bad, I guess. Oh, and we actually get to go up twice on this. Ooh, that's a thing. So the ring tempts us make one of these saucy, I guess. You know what? I could also choose the Peddler to be the Ring Bearer. No, but it could be blocked by Frodo right now. So that's not any good. There's combinations there that are pretty spicy, but... Alright. Okay. I mean... You got to block, I guess. Attack with the Ten Ball. And then we're still protected from Skrelv, sort of. If we attack with Shieldred, they could block, and that gets kind of ugly. And we possibly die. Because they could chump block Shieldred, then you chump block that. You'd still, we still have two blockers. Ugh, I feel like I'm supposed to attack with two of these. But I'm not going to. Yep, they gained some life. Could make that indestructible, which it looks like they're probably going to here. Sure. Alright. Ooh, you know what we need? We need the big uh, Wraith King, Witch King, or whatever. That's what we need here. That would be good. I should have put it on that, though, so I could draw and discard this thing, which would have been a big deal. What does this even do? At the beginning of your end step, remove a hope counter. If you do, you draw a card. Then if it has nothing on there, you gain four life. Okay. Makes sense. Alright, we're down to four. Come on, deck. Help us out. That, all right, kind of does a thing. <laughs> Not really what we were looking for, but, you know, two cards doesn't hurt. Ooh. Ooh, that, oh, man. That could have been great. Dang it. All right, let's see what we can find here. Oh, another Brutal Cathar would have been good. Uh, yeah, this has to go, I guess. Well, maybe just the Shattered Sanctum goes. Trying to think, though. One, two, three, four. I mean, I want to get rid of Ratted Rabbix because I want to be able to play Shieldred and something next turn, possibly. But I think we're still dead here, potentially. Opponent's at five. Because, like, we can only block one, two, three, four things, realistically, I'm assuming they have a way to get rid of one of these. Man, I need a Spirited Companion to draw cards behind Shieldred. Oh, no, no, we'll get at least one from the Nazgulls. So we will gain two at a minimum from that. Okay, that's a good move from the opponents. So you gain two life from Frodo. Makes a lot of sense. Don't hate that. All right. Okay. Okay. A backup Frodo, sure. Okay. All right. Oh, we got there. We at least have the blocker now, but we can't. We have to shield it first, right? That that just feels like absolutely necessary. Sadly, much as I want to do this, I think this is imperative here. Though I could have held on to that land for a second. Okay, what do we do here? We attack with both. We get to draw a discard. We go to four. We have white and black creatures to block with. Assuming you protect one. They can still gain more life from Frodo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. That's getting through anyway. All right, I guess we're getting in there with two of them. I'm just seeing what's up. Ooh, another Nazgul. Not quite good enough, though. 
All right. Uh oh, what's that card in hand? We don't like that. We definitely don't like that. Also, they could get another angel or uh, evangel and tap some. Oh, all their evangel. Well, they got extra ones. I can't tell how many. They I think they only played three actual ones. So they should still have another. I mean, you got to block something, opponent. Because they're lethal. I think what they're trying to decide, though, is like if they block with what? And do you, do you block with something like Frodo where you can use your Plaza of Heroes? Which is legit. Plus, there's a chance I could have a useful card in hand since you saw me get rid of another Nazgul. All right. So what are we doing? We're going to protect the small Frodo. All right. And then hopefully we're not dead. <laughs> That's kind of all we're doing here. Like... I probably could have attacked with Elish Norn there, to be honest. That doesn't have an ETB, so that's good. Since we didn't attack with Elish Norn, that doesn't do anything. So now the opponent's on total blocking duty when we attack. Alright. They lose two. Got another Nazgul, which is pretty funny. Alright. One more creature deal combat damage to you. Each opponent sacrifices a creature... Discard a card. This game's indestructible, and I tap it. That sounds great. Do we at least have a blocker for Giada? We are going to attack with this, this, and the other Nazgul. I think is fine. Probably even this two-two Duder, because the opponent's at three. So you got to do something here. Not putting Elish Norn at risk because there are things like this and like the Evangel that are turned off as long as we have Elish Norn. So I don't want to put ooh. Ooh, okay. Uh, sorry, Nazgul, you got to go. All right, so now we're at six, so we have a little more wiggle room. Yep, Frodo's going to juice up to be able to gain some life. We could also kill Frodo so they don't get to gain life, which would be a thing. All right, do we care about these? I mean, it's a chance. I mean, they gain two... Nah, we just hold this, because we can also just kill Giada when it attacks. That's fine. Opponent's at three. I think we're okay. I could have probably gotten away attacking with everything, but felt a little unnecessarily risky for no reason. Which is, you know, what unnecessary means. All right. Opponent goes to three. I think we're in good shape here. That gives your creatures a bonus. I think we're going to survive that okay. Yep, you get that. And we're going to try to target it. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Nope, 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 nope. Can't, because this gives them hexproof. But it didn't matter. Yeah, it had hexproof from the flowering of the white tree, so I wasn't actually able to use the Iganjo. But I would have went down to two, and then they definitely can't stop all that damage. So, yeah, good comeback there, because we were falling behind pretty, pretty big in that one. Uh, all right, so three Frodo, three Spirited Companion, two Call of the Ring, three Juggernaut Peddler, two Boromir, four Brutal Cathar, nine Nazgul, which sadly all got the same picture. I really was hoping we get all nine pictures. One Elish Norn, three Inquisitor Captain, two Shieldred, the Apocalypse, one Dreaded Rabbix, one Elish Norn, one Witch King of Angmaw, and two Ring Wraiths. One Iganjo, four Plains, four Swamp, one Takanuma. For each of Caves of Corlo, Shattered Sanctum, Forsaken Crossroads, and two Merricks. The one thing I would say about that particular deck, though, is it has a lot of room to change, right? I don't think anything in it is even close to optimal. And I think ultimately, you have a lot of different choices with this set alone. If you want to go harder on the Nazgul Ring Wraith thing, I think that's possible. If you want to go heavy on like Legendary alongside the Ring Wraith, or if you just want to double down on things tempting you with the ring i think all of those are very viable so all worth checking out for sure but we will have a lot of other videos using lord of the rings so if you want to check those out i will be sure to link them so y'all can see those as well